Agent Marty signing in. Welcome to part 14 of the C++ and SFML to do platform tutorial series. So again, I apologize profusely for the last, there's a quite a gap between the last two videos that I did on this series. So, so I'm going to be making up for it this time and I'm going to do an, another video here. We're just going to get a bit caught up on the series, do a couple videos here of the series to make up ground for it. So let's start coding. So where we left the code last time is basically let's just compile and run, take a look at what we got. So we've got this little thing here, nothing too fancy, it's all zoomed in, but now we want to add some controls. So to do that, we want to go into the while app that is not app, window that is open. We're going to want to add some if logic. So to just type if, open some parameters. The parameters you want to give it is the test we're going to be checking for. So first we want to check for keyboard and then add the unary scope resolution operator, which is two columns, which says that is key pressed belongs to the keyboard class. So that's what that's saying. Then automatically it's going to open up some parameters. And the parameters here we want to type keyboard again, and then again the two colons, and then inside here which key we're talking about. So the key we're talking about right now, we're going to start with up. So that's just key up on your keyboard. If you, you can actually check out the SFML documentation, and it explains it goes into detail with all the possible keys you can use. There'll be a link to that down in the description below. So here's the logic. Once you get that logic all sorted out, you want to open up some curly braces, not squirrely braces, curly braces, but squirrely braces sounds kind of cool, so I think I'll keep saying that. So if we press up or down, we're going to be dealing with the Y coordinates, which is up and down. So we're going to want to subtract because of let it gets smaller as you go higher up, bigger as it goes slower down. All you have to do is just press X and then, or not X, Y plus equals one, or a little shortcut is just X, Y plus plus, which is basically just adding one to Y. It's called uh, incrementing. And it's basically a cool little feature of C++. We don't want to really have to retype this whole thing, so you can actually just copy it and then just paste it in there all nicely. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Place that up with down. And what's going to happen if we press down? Well, the opposite. So we're going to want to decrement Y by one. So we could say plus equals, but for now, decrementing will work just fine. Save character. So now we can actually just copy both of these, Control C, and give yourself a little space and paste them in there again. And let's sort of place up with right and then left. And then instead of dealing with Y, we're gonna to wanna to deal with X. And then we're gonna deal wanna deal with X again down here. So we're gonna save it, compile and run it, and we'll take a look if the worst works. So I move up and it moves down. Okay, that's actually how we want it because we're gonna pretend that our little screen here, this is the camera. So we're moving the camera up and down. So that's all good. But left and right don't seem to be matching up with up and down. So we just want to reverse those. So instead of X plus plus, which one was wrong? It was, yeah, these two. Okay, so X plus plus, you want to replace X minus minus with X plus plus and vice versa. Not any scores, minuses. Now save that, run that. It should look a lot better. So there we go. So now it actually behaves and acts like a camera. So we got a little camera here. So what we want to do is we're going to want to create another statement. So we can actually just copy and paste this, control C and whoops paste it right in there in this case we're going to be dealing with the space key so space and then instead of x plus plus we're not going to want to increment x we're going to want to save to a uh, text file but to write to a text file in c plus plus we're going to need a few things so I'll scroll up to the top of your code and we're going to add a few more includes so you're going to want to just go hashtag whoops make sure it's on a new line include and open up some of those little greater than less than signs. And inside there, we're gonna to wanna to start with IO stream, which is just basically how to use the terminal or the command line. And then hit enter, and we're gonna to need to include one more. So hashtag include. Make sure it's all spelled correctly because typos, they don't seem to work for some reason. Don't know why. And then the last one's gonna be FS stream. Actually, just F stream. You could, you could say FS stream, but it doesn't really matter. And now we're going to want to use a namespace, which is just going to be std using namespace. And the, this way, basically, we don't have to go every time we want to use something like cout, std, colon, colon, cout. So that's a scout, but it's basically a huge code saver and time saver. So it's going to save us some time. So now let's go back into your keyboard is press space. And now we're going to want to create a file. So now here in this if logic, you're going to want to go fs dream and then type file, or this is actually here is an object, so it can be whatever you want it to, we're just gonna say file. So you're gonna wanna go file.open, and then you're gonna wanna give it some parameters. The parameters you're gonna wanna give it is a string, and this is the location of where the file's gonna output, and the name of the file. 
So we're just going to save this in a, our data folder, add a subdirectory, and the subdirectory will just be output. We can call this folder. And then we can just call this here at the end of it. Test will work fine. Text actually will work fine too. Dot txt. The extension doesn't really matter, but we're just going to go with txt for now. You can actually use like dot marty or dot whatever your name is really for that matter. But we're just going to keep it simple for now. In the line with the semicolon, but you won't be able to find that if we haven't created the folder like that. So you're going to want to go open up your project directory so make sure it's got that that code blocks project file in there so in data we're going to want to create a new directory or a new folder and the folder we were going to call this is like we called it which was output i believe it was output there we go so now it should be able to find it all good and good to go so now we've created the file and the file's open and ready to be typed in so now we want to save some stuff to the file stuff so all you have to do is type file to lesson signs or whatever it is and then type whatever you want it is so we're going to go with the x variable and the y variable but since that's probably going to look they're going to be right next to each other we won't know for sure if it's one number or two numbers we're going to add a little string right in here and this here is just going to be a comma in between the two and a space so end that line with end line now we've written to the text file now we're going to want to actually close it so then you just go file dot close and open some parameters and don't give it anything parameters and just close it so now if we compile and run this it should work all good yeah, let's see it's actually a of stream not io just of stream just like that that's what you want to do so make sure it's all like that save it let's give it a go and hopefully a bit more successful this time and let's see so move a little hit space and now we should have ah, and here in output we have a text file double click to open it up and it says negative 365 so but that doesn't seem quite accurate because we know that this square here is only 50 by 50 pixels and we left it about here and that's because we scaled up by seven but we forgot to scale down by seven so I'll close that out now you just want to scale down so just go x and then multiply by and you're going to want to go with actually a negative number so negative seven so maybe math class did have a use after all so again like in math class if you multiply two negative numbers you will get a positive number and if you multiply two opposite signed ones like a negative and positive you'll get a negative so since we know that x is negative and we know that seven is negative it's going to give us a positive number so we're going to repeat the process for y so x asterisk to multiply and negative seven so now if we save this give it a go again all right so we've moved over i know that this part here is 50 pixels hit space and let's open up our text file again and now we have two two thousand all right we multiply we don't want to multiply one one to five which is just a forward slash so forward slash don't want to make it any bigger than it already is there we go give that another go again move over hit space by 50 pixels output and we should have fixed 50 pixels for x and yep we've got exactly 50 pixels perfect sorry for my voice being a little squeaky there but it's beauty what can you do eh well i guess i could eat a pine cone to get a deep voice but the thought of eating a pine cone doesn't sound very good to me so it's working all good we can move around hit space once we are happy with our coordinates but we have a problem this is running too fast if that could possibly be a problem so it's running way too fast we can't really get perfectly where we want it i mean i got it perfectly at that time and i got it that time too but it's not going to work out that good every time so we're going to need to slow things down but we don't want to slow down the control of the user we just want to slow down how fast it moves so one attempt we can actually try is we're going to create another if statement so let's just copy and paste this logic here because it's pretty similar to the logic we're going to use and this keyboard here is going to be left shift so left shift on with html is just l and then shift so now to slow down the code without slowing down the user input controls we're going to want to use the sfml time function so to use it just go up out of your while app dot is open loop type clock to access the clock not cloak clock to access the clock class and then we're going to make an object called game clock and you don't need any parameters or anything and that just like that so now we want to use this object we've just created so we want to go into the while at window dot is open loop we're going to create a float and we're going to want to call this one fps we can really call it whatever we want but basically it's just going to be so we can time out how fast things happen in our map so fps equals game clock dot restart and then dot as seconds is what we're going to go with and you can take those parameters out there to make it look neat and tidy so now what we want to do is we want to replace down here instead of set position we want to move 
So move. But we don't want to just move it just by x because again, like in math class, speed equals time times rate. So we're going to want to multiply x times fps and we're going to want to multiply y times fps. So now instead of incrementing and decrementing x and y, we're going to want to actually just set these equal to some values. So just go up here and y, we're going to set that equal to 1 for now. And then y here, we're going to set that equal to a negative 1. So I'll go in reverse x plus plus instead of x plus plus x equals negative one it wasn't x plus plus it was x minus minus and set this here equal to one so that equal to one so now all should go good save it give it a try see what we got problem it can does not have class type so actually we do need those parameters give it a save give it a go again so we can see that we can move except it's just turtle place now so we don't want it quite that slow. That's now what we can do to fix that is we can either set x and y either equal to greater numbers, or we can instead of going as seconds, we can go as milliseconds. Take out that last little extra is there. Control save, give it a go, and let's see what we got. Okay, so that's actually a very reasonable pace. We're gonna go again. We're gonna want to set some controls to slow this down. Okay, so like if press shift, you'll go a little slow. But one thing we notice is that we don't we just we keep moving no matter what. So we want to fix that. So we're going to need some logic to counter all of that because these are setting because when we we're just incrementing x and y we didn't need to set it back equal to zero because it was just incrementing but this here is actually giving x a value so we're going to want to actually set give an x a value if you're not pressing the keys so the logic we want to give it here is just we're, we can go if and then open some parameters add a not symbol which is just an exclamation mark open some more parameters and then we want to copy up so we'll start with at the top copy that control c paste it in there and let's make this into a one liner for the not coordinates so if you're not pressing up and then and so you can't be it says for this to work you can't be pressing up or down so then we want to go again open up the not operator put some parameters and then just copy down so if you're not pressing up or down is what we're saying here which is a little bit of long code if not pressing any of that, y is going to be set back equal to 0. So this way I'll stop the movement. So we can just copy this here, control C, and we can repeat the same process just for instead of up, we'll just replace that with right and left. And again, instead of y, we just want to go with x this time. So I'll save and run that, and now it should have it moving around and stop moving around too. So move, he stops, all good. I think it's looking actually pretty good. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and this video helped you out. If you guys have any questions or comments about C++, leave that down in the comment section. And thank you for subscribing. And a quick question for any of you guys on Linux who do video editing. So, I would love to use Linux for everything and scrap my Windows 10 because Windows 10 is worth scrapping. But, I have one slight problem. And that's when I go to I've edit videos on Linux, it just takes too long. I'm using Shotcut to, and then the export time can take hours. Whereas with Windows, it's a lot faster. And I think that is because it's not using my graphics card to encode it. So thus, it takes a lot longer when it's actually using my CPU. So if you guys have any idea of how to get that set up and you've set it up before, or if you know anything at all, I'd love to hear that down, down in the comment section. It certainly would help me out. So anyway, you have a good one, and I'll see you next video. Eat your Mario.